afternoon. Ben Dover here with Psych News. Tonight we will be discussing a concerning drinking pattern that has grown amongst university students. Richard Head. That's right, Ben. Students are reported to be the heaviest adolescent drinkers. The trendy consumption of alcohol mixed with energy drinks, also known as AMEDs, is an increasing high-risk behaviour affecting students globally. Dr Holden Groin created a study to assess expectancies which related to a person's belief of an expected result or outcome of a particular behaviour. Also assessing consequences which refers to alcohol related actions and circumstances resulting from AMED consumption. These are categorised in four distinct groups, role functioning, social, personal and physical consequences. But Dick, for the purpose of this study, I will only be focusing on personal and physical consequences. I couldn't help but notice how the study relates to Banjuri's social learning theory as it forms distinct links between motivations for alcohol use and subsequent expectancies, which I guess basically suggests that outcome expectancies will only reinforce a particular behaviour if the person enjoys and values the expected outcome. Previous studies have also found that hedonistic motives and drinking to cope were significant predictors of abuse or increase in AMED consumption. Also, it was found that specific patterns of alcohol expectancies are significant predictors in motivating alcohol use and risk of alcohol abuse. Also, expecting individuals who get more intoxicated and don't think bad things will happen will report more physical consequences. Dr. Groin, could you please tell the viewers how you conducted this study? Sure thing, Dick. Well, I enrolled 963 first-year university students whom agreed to participate in the study. However, I did have to exclude 9% of these participants due to their failure to answer honestly and randomly reporting. Basically, after data cleaning, the final sample comprised of 876 students? That is correct. Dr. Groin, how did you go about investigating the consequences <coughs> of AMED use? Well, I decided to use a modified version of the timeline follow-back to measure AMED-related consequences. These included physical, such as passing out or having a hangover, personal, feelings of remorse or sexual incidents, social, physical, verbal arguments, public urination. You've been there before, right, Dick? <laughs> <laughs> destructive <laughs> destructive behaviour and role functioning, impaired performance at work. So, like it was mentioned before, you only use physical and personal subscale, right? Yes, that is correct. Nice of you to be paying attention. <laughs> so what about the expectancies? Well, to determine expectancies of consuming AMEDs, we went about using the anticipated effects of alcohol scale. This scale is a self-report measure that uses four subscales on both the ascending limb, so how participants felt immediately after consuming alcohol, and the descending limb, how participants felt 90 minutes after consuming their first alcoholic drink. These subscales included high positive, such as feeling cheerful or outgoing, low positive, feeling stress-free, high negative, being impolite or restless, and no ne low negative, feeling unsteady or ill. However, for your study, the focus was on individuals scoring on the high positive and low negative ascending limb scale, and analyses only and an analyses only use these two in support of your hypothesis. After this, we were left with 625 participants, majority being 20 or so year old females, and most of these participants reported having their first alcoholic drink around the age of 16, which is underage, um, and all consumed alcohol and energy drinks in the past 28 days. No relationship? Like, nothing? Here we go. But that goes against all of Dick's previous findings. Not Versa's paper. Yeah, but Versa was employed by an energy drink franchise. I mean, the credibility of his findings are pretty scarce. Not to mention the fact that they only used a tiny subset of their initial 2,329 participants. I mean, look at that credibility. Also, got to think about Dross's paper. I mean, that was an Australian study. Sure, all the previous literature was American, but this Australian one really had a lot of credible information. Look, I will fight you right there. This study was perfect, SPSS and all. <laughs> I'll admit, the study did have some credible qualities, like the fact that the timeline follow-back had, you know, test-retest reliability and... Um, what did the AEAS have? Uh, deleted items odd ratio? Yeah, but don't forget both scales compensate for self-report studies. True, but what about the fact that the students participated in the study before tutorials ended? I mean, maybe they had the incentive to complete the study quicker. They could have, 
I don't know, taken the shorter route of branch logic or maybe even skipped a question or two? No, Dr. Green employed false choice. Well, not for everything. There you go. Sure, there was no relationship found in this study, but that doesn't mean you can reject the possibility of AMEDs having negative consequences at all. I mean, do the study again, this time employ forced choice. And if you're gonna employ branch logic, make sure there's no shorter route to the end of the survey. Also, make it a survey that students can do in the privacy of their own home. That way they feel no time pressures. Welcome back. Our next topic, monkeys, can they really talk? <laughs>